Was the War of the Rebellion won or lost in Virginia? Did areas beside Virginia matter in the outcome of the war? These questions have preoccupied historians over the last decades. Depending on the scholar, historians will claim that Gettysburg was a major war-changing battle, and others will claim that battles in the Western Theater, such as Chickamauga or Vicksburg, had a major impact on the outcome of the war. The battle lines are starkly drawn between the different scholarly views. However, few people even consider what happened in the Trans-Mississippi, much less even the far western theaters of the war. So for this episode, we'll take a brief look at whether the West matters. The Wars of Rebellions as theaters of conflict are divided fourfold. The Eastern Theater, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Appalachian Mountains, the Western Theater, from the Appalachian Mountains to the Mississippi, the Trans Mississippi Theater, encompassing areas like Missouri, Kansas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and the Indian Territory, and finally the Far West, which included California and New Mexico Territory. First and foremost, it was the far western territory of California that helped cause the rebellion when the territory, much more rapidly than expected, sought entry into the United States after the war with Mexico and the discovery of gold. In addition, similar to Kansas, settlers from the southern states, especially Texas, tried to imprint their slave and states' rights views on the western region, resulting in conflicts in southern New Mexico and California among others. After the news of South Carolina's secession reached the region, and Texas stumbled half-heartedly out of the United States, pro-slavery settlers in Southern California and New Mexico held secession conventions, and in the case of Colorado, Arizona, actually created separate states tied to the rebellious government in Montgomery. Interestingly, the secession of Arizona and Colorado the southern part of California, happened before the second wave of secession even took place in the east. The conflict had come west, at least intellectually. At the same time, in December 1861, Henry H. Sibley, with a small rebel army, arrived in El Paso, and from there invaded New Mexico. Rebellion forces intended to reach the gold fields in California and Colorado increase on the secessionist footprint in the region, and finally reach the Pacific coast for a transcontinent empire of their own. Sibley's invasion force of Texans faced a ragtag opposition of hastily brought together volunteer units from New Mexico, Colorado, and California, as well as members of U.S. regular army units stationed in New Mexico. Following the Battle of Glorieta Pass in March of 1862, Sibley's forces had to withdraw, never to return to New Mexico. There will be a future special on-site episode of the Battle of Glorieta Pass in the U.S. staging area at Fort Union to explore the campaign in greater detail. While the rebel military activities during the War of Rebellion in the Far West ceased with the New Mexico campaign, 
It is also important to remember that the War of the Rebellion characterized the whole period in U.S. history. The world kept spinning. Despite rebel and U.S. forces in Tennessee, Virginia, and other parts doing their best to kill each other. As a result, when U.S. regulars withdrew from the Western territories, these territories and states created volunteer units. The Oregon Volunteers, for example, did not find any rebel forces during the rebellion, but assumed the constabulary role of the U.S. military to protect settlements and find Native Americans. Similar situations existed across the western parts of the country. The United States and Native people had always been at war over the growing theft of Native land and the repeatedly broken treaties. These conflicts continued into the War of the Rebellion era, with the only exception being that U.S. regulars were not the main fighting force, but local volunteers, many of whom held racist attitudes towards their opponents. The sad result was that soldiers from Colorado, whose units had fought at Glorietta Pass, were involved in an inexcusable atrocity against the Cheyenne at Sand Creek. Similarly, other soldiers involved in the repulse of the rebel invasion of New Mexico fought against Apache and Navajo people, forcing the latter on a deadly march to Basco Redondo on the northern Great Plains. Rumors swirled that the Dakota and rebels were in league with each other. However, it were the many failures on the part of the U.S. government and local agents that brought about an uprising by the Dakota people in 1862. The government acted swiftly and forcefully against them using largely local volunteer units, some diverted from the rebellion. Ironically, it was only a few weeks before Lincoln freed hundreds of thousands of slaves that he allowed the largest mass execution in U.S. history of dubiously convicted members of the Dakota tribe. Finally, we need to remember that the Republican Party had run on Western themes in 1860, and the government implemented the Transcontinental Railroad and Homestead Act, among others, drawing more people to the Western territory. It was not just a war about bringing the South back, it was also the goal of the party to open the West. It is easy to forget that while rebels and U.S. troops killed each other at Gettysburg, Fredericksburg, or around Atlanta, the conflict between native people and white invaders continued unabated, with many volunteers devoted to the fighting against native people. In addition, while the New Mexico campaign was not on the same level as the Antietam campaign or the Atlanta campaign, it nevertheless was a campaign that could have dramatically complicated the War of the Rebellion for the Lincoln government. The Far West was just as essential as any other region during the war. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.